Well, the lag right now, Bustamante, and yes, Steve Davis is joining me in the com box, but Dave, he says you told him to come in here. And look at this for a lag. Is this an indication of the way things are going to go here? Reyes just pips Bustamante for the lag. First rack, race now a race to Winner 11. Efren Reyes to break. Well, Efren Reyes here in action. Not completely impressive last, last max round, but he's got a chance to make up for that. Dave, you told me to come in this studio. And I'm sure John McDonald in the uh, introduction wasn't introducing the players, but ordering, ordering two rounds of toast and a cup of tea. Well, Reyes quickly slots the one into the side pocket, Steve. And we were saying earlier that Efren has really given us nothing convincing to this stage in the event. But the recent inductee into the Hall of Fame can turn it on like nothing, like no one the game has ever seen. Going to take a good shot here to get from the three to the four. Very rarely would you see the split of balls end up in this situation. Just enough daylight to make the four an easy option into the corner, but this five is now tricky. Or is it? Is the five nine combination on? The way that Efren's played this shot, we have to believe it is. And it is! Efren Reyes, a break and finish. We didn't see many of those in his match against Vandenberg. Another look at it, nine right into the heart of the pocket. But Efren would like to be looking at a few more 5-9 combinations like this in the match. That would get him to the finish line a lot quicker. And just to remind you, it is a race to 11 now. A little longer match. And a longer match, Steve, really should favor the better player. Yes, Jim, who is it? <laughs> Which one is the better player? <laughs> rack two, Efren Reyes to break, leading one rack to nil. We know who has apparently got the best break, and they do say that uh, Efren Reyes' weakest part of his game is his break-off, although I've never considered that's the, the situation. Certainly not on the television table, anyway. Slightly easier to break off on the TV table. And the reason? Well, uh, there's a poor break. Ball in hand. The reason why it's easy to break off on the television table, absolutely no moisture in the cloth whatsoever. The balls react superbly well, and so you don't have to bang them so hard to get them moving around the table. This was really a mishit. Look at all the topspin on that cue ball. Just trying to impart a little more oomph into that break. And aired on the side of control. So the advantage swings back to Bustamante. Quickly looking around the table for any problem balls. I'm sure nine ball pool fans have got used to the patterns around the table now. Quickly work out where there may be a sticking point positionally. And obviously this three and then to the four. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. Can float this cue ball over. Just nestle in between the four and the eight. It's a bit short of pace. That is a, a misjudgment and may now be forced into playing the bank shot or could play the safety. Steve, it almost looks like he might be able to play the bank shot here and draw the cue ball into the eight. Bank the three into this corner. Play the cue ball into the eight. And if the three didn't go in, you may have a chance of snookering him behind the four, which is the next ball on anyway. Spot on there, and actually would have snooked him behind the eight. But has he left the four on? Yeah, I think he can. 
well if you well if you can't put it into the bottom left as we look on our screen you can certainly cut it into the opposite pocket that is missable but his problem is how did he how does he bring this cue ball out into the table to get on the five which would be easily potable from the bottom half of the table oh what a what a sweet shot. hit that was had to draw to the side cushion and swing it back between the colors with a lot of left hand english he certainly made that shot look easy and uh you know, this that shot is a little is easier than it would be on a club table but even so when you've got to make the positional play, play count it's not it's, it's easy to twitch as well it's easy to not hit the ball properly and especially given it's your first look at the table he never got up in the first rack the loop bridge employed by most of the top class pool players one of the reasons uh, they use the loop bridge they can very very fluent lazy grip if you have the loop bridge you can jack it up to play top spin or lower it down to play back spin and these balls are slightly bigger than a snooker ball so to play with top spin you've got to be higher up the ball with your bridge just looking at this nine a little tricky you wouldn't want to be shooting this shot on a snooker table, Steve. No problems for Francisco here, though. He replies with a terrific clearance to level it up here on center stage. 1-1 in the race to 11. Efren Reyes got off to a good start with a, a quick nine ball. Sacrifice control of the table with a poor break off. And now we see the player who possibly has the greatest break-off of all time. Certainly hits the ball as hard as anybody. Not far short. Massive crowd in attendance, and why not? And you see a lot of them there. I wonder which one of these Back two three. Filipino Francis superstars one, many one. of these are here to see and here to cheer on through to the finals. Bustamante winding it up. And the Blue two down. Two just collapses into the pocket. Had an argument with the pocket. Decided, oh, go on, then I'll go in. Not used to seeing him break from that side, Steve. In his last match, when he was so successful against Lee Van Corteza, he broke from the other side of the table. Very strange. Watch this, too. He's got the bank with a bit of, bit of safety to come up the table. He's made the bank, but he's... Oh, I think that knuckle has helped him so much. If the cue ball doesn't hit his knuckle, he may be behind the five and nine. Just catches the point and stops that cue ball from possibly going behind the five. The two banks in a row for Bustamante. Oh, no. Oh, he a got blatant a, error. Got away with one the first time. He did not get away with this positional error. The only way top class players usually come unstuck is with positional play. He had a lot of room to work with there. He was playing inside the six ball. And this is no easy escape. Really just the one cushion and a very difficult hit on the four. You'll be playing it pretty firm, Jim. Yes, and trusting to luck as well, Steve. Four cushions. A little tougher hit, but oh. look at the result. Wow, what a shot that was. There's the difference between a pool player and a snooker player. To me, it just looked like the natural one cushion escape, but there's a man that knows his way around the table. Well, that was a very advanced get out, uh, giving himself options of getting that ball somehow safe. Obviously, he, he could have called it and pushed it towards a pocket, 
but he decided that the three cushion get out that I would imagine well 90% of the pool players uh, that have been playing in this tournament wouldn't have envisaged um, he decided that had better chances percentage chances of coming out safe after contact and remember after contacting the ball that is the ball on which is the lowest ball on the table you must then make contact with a cushion a ball must make contact with a cushion any ball well I thought Efren Reyes must have thought he was in with a chance here and now he's got to get another leave can he get through this gap Oh, well, he may have left a 7-4-7 seven, seven combination into the middle. I don't know, though. That point of the middle pocket there, you can see sticking out. If he hits the 4 into the 7 pretty hard, I think it just could catch the point. Yes, it looks like it's just far enough past that side pocket. But again, it's speed. That would be his only chance, and what a risky shot. The safety can't be easy here. Well, he can't cut it in, that's for sure. he says. <laughs> well, it mustn't be easy when the great one has taken a second look at it. A delicate shot, and I think, yes, he has snookered him. What a deft touch Reyes showed us there. You have to be careful. Also, he didn't want to hit it too hard to push the four out right over the middle pocket. We can just about see it, can he? Because then, then Bustamante could have just gone across the table and knocked it in. As it is, Bustamante can just... Wow, this is tight. Barely see an edge, and that's all he had to do. His eyes are about 14 years younger than our Reyes's. And that certainly paid dividends with that particular effort. Right, he's trying to, if he could get it past a seven, he could. Oh, another clever, clever shot from Reyes. <laughs> that was a very advanced safety shot as well. Put in, he, he knew that at some stage he was going to have to move these balls apart to get a, a chance. And he, he moved them apart very cleverly to keep those three balls in a line. Also trying to sneak the cue ball behind the eight at the same time, but he got the most of the four ball snookered. And Ray and, and, and Buster meant he doesn't really want to be hitting this part of the ball unless he could pot it, but I don't think well it could be an option. It's tight. Looks like he's going for it. a split second there I thought the tactical side of the game could this match be won and lost on a safety shot this well, frame we've seen so many great shots uh, played already uh, to keep control of the table to keep control of the tactical part of the game who's going to make the first mistake well Francisco has already shown Efren there's room there What a shot. Even if it didn't go in, he was wedged behind the six. This looks, looks like a completely different Efren Reyes that we saw yesterday. The only danger with that shot was if he did, uh, if he'd have gone a little bit closer, he would have been snookered on the five. But then, after playing such a great shot, he's played a shot that's a little bit loose. He doesn't want to be this thin on this green six. He'll probably pot it. But the cue ball is going to be doing more work than he wants. He's played some terrific tactical shots already. Bustamante really hasn't made a mistake in this rack and looks like losing it. Well, apart from the one glaring mistake, I suppose, early in the positional effort that went awry.
you wonder sometimes with so much respect between the players whether there's, there's a little bit of fear there but uh, Ray is now controlling the match in the early stages and we'll have the break we'll see that break after the break Nearest the uh, battle of the Filipino superstars, Efren Reyes against Francisco Bustamante. Uh, Reyes, 2 1 up at the moment. Just to give you an idea of how popular this sport is in the Philippines, we're going to head there live right now because all the bars across Manila, across the whole country, are watching the show. Uh, on the line is uh, Peter Santos, who's at the National Sports Grill in Manila. Uh, Peter, what's the atmosphere like there at the moment? My God, the atmosphere here is one that is, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of appreciating the game, but they're kind of quiet because two of our boys are playing. Everybody very nervous. Very nervous. <laughs> How many people are, are watching right now in the bar and, and across the country, do you think? Bars, right here in the bar now, there are about 300 people, standing room only, but they're kind of quiet, just watching the wonderful game both, both our boys are playing. Are you enjoying Sky Sports coverage from Wales? Yeah, yeah since last night, game of Efren, everybody was, uh, you know, jittery and nervous. <laughs> Tell us how famous these two players are. These two, this is, uh, it's just like uh, wherever they go, let's put it this way, people know them, doormen, waiters, wherever they go, they know them. And tell me, describe what it's like inside the bar right now. Inside the bar, Efren just scratched and everybody groaned. <laughs> and, uh, they, they're, they're just quiet, drinking, you know, enjoying the game. Both, both uh, Efren has more uh, supporters being the older one, but uh, Bustamante has his own supporters too. He just hanked the 99 ball and everybody was clapping there. <laughs> we uh, saw that, yeah, obviously. Very, very good. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, somebody uh, even brought a dog. Hey. Uh, someone's brought a dog in, did you say? He brought a dog. Did you, even the dog is appreciating <laughs> Who's the uh, dog supporting, Efren or Francisco? Maybe the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we'll let you enjoy the match. I know it's like someone here disturbing the FA Cup final, which would be, uh, would be a terrible thing to do. So we'll let you carry on and uh, okay. buy a, have a beer on me out there. Thank Back you. Five. Thank Francisco you so much. Bustamante to break. 2-2. Two, two. Let's head back to our commentary team. <laughs> Well, magandang gabi, Pilipinas. Mabaihai kayang lahat. What was that about your member? That was saying hello to everybody in the Philippines and live long and prosper. That was uh, what Francisco Bustamante told me to say. He wanted to send a nice little message back as well. I'm sure that says I, I really do like your sister. I think that's... He's, he stitched you right up there. What have you said there? Your name's mud now in the Philippines. Well, only one way to find out, Steve, but what an effort this is. And uh, isn't that fantastic to listen to all them watching this? And as Peter Santos said, it's a shame these two great champions have to meet in the last 16, but that's the way the draw works out. 300 people and a dog. And the dog is going nowhere near the hot dog stand. Tell you what, the chances are that somebody's going to step on his tail before the end of this match. He's got out of position there. Uh, that three does not go past the five, I'm certain. Yes, the one aspect of Bustamante's game right now that seems to be deserting him is the position. He just, uh, as well as he's potting, seems very confident. He's lost the cue ball on a couple occasions. Unfortunately, position is everything at nine ball pool. If you're going to be a bit nervous and a bit tentative, it's not the pots that you're going to miss. Well, well that's the, that's, if you start missing the pots, that's the nth degree. But if you're going to be a bit nervous, a bit tight, it's the position that's going to go awry first. He looks like he's making, he's trying to make the three five combination here. 
Well, great try, but that's all he could do. Has he got away with it? Yes. For the moment anyway, Steve, the touch that Efren Reyes has shown us, like a surgeon at the table. You'd have to expect Bustamante to be facing jail when he comes up again. Slow roll behind the six, trying to line the balls up. And now Bustamante <laughs> pays the price for losing position three shots ago and now has to trust to luck. Obviously the one cushion escape up across is the natural path but you know full well that they don't play natural paths. There is a three cushion a three cushion escape Jim that has much more chance of, of having a safety aspect to it and if he did catch this right he could actually plant the cue ball behind the six after kicking out. It's a definite chance well, I definitely agree with you, Steve. The one cushion escape easier, but the three cushion offers more value. Well, he called it thin, but he has got distance between the balls, and the five ball is a problem for Reyes. It may squeeze past, but you'd like to be right behind the three ball to be able to squeeze it past there. The 3-5 combination is definitely not an easy option. What's he going to do here? If you talk to any of the top players that are very familiar with all the top Philippine players, the one aspect of their game that they say is above anybody else, and you can see there is just room for that 3 Steve, but very tight, is their kicking ability. They kick better than anybody in the world. And for those of you not familiar with that term, that's getting out of a snooker and getting out of a snooker and getting it safe. Uh, I thought you meant that's why there weren't so many dogs in the Philippines. Well, that was a marvellous try. I got a feeling there, you know, he played the 3-5 combination and also tried to cannon into the 9 as a bit of insurance. He may have made the 9 as well. Not absolutely certain, but that, he was trying to push that 9 towards the hole as well. He couldn't guarantee how he was going to come out on the 3. He played a a shot with the... Oh, beautiful strike down the rail there. <laughs> Reyes once again gets the initiative. Well, what a couple shots he's shown us to secure rack number five. Once again, the positional error from Francisco Bustamante has proved costly. Race to 11. Winner breaks. The break off can play a part. Can Reyes get his break going now? <laughs> the magician looks cool and calm and collected. And another player that the ice man of the game, Mika Imminent, is upstairs on our other match table. Mika seems to have a tricky eight ball. Apologies, I thought that was Mika from behind. He's changed his shirt. Come up against Chin Chung Yang, and you can see the current scoreline 2 1 in favor of the former world champion. That's not a certainty. As you can see by how long he's taking on, he can't cut it into the middle pocket, but he's really got to roll it into the corner, but. That's missable. Early days in that match. But we're getting our rack six, teeth stuck into this break, game on centre stage. We've had the starter. That's ended up 3-2 to Reyes. And the main course is underway. A good break required. Once again, too much topspin. Is the Needs blue two, two going to go in? in. Yes, it has done. Well, get the balls flying around the table as much as you can, and one will eventually fall in. Just too much topspin on the ball. Not as athletic a break-off as Bustamenti, but then who does have? Possibly with the exception of Alex Pagalion. But in no man's land as far as an easy pot on the one. This will be a good strike and possibly if he gets this his best shot of the match so far. 
Wow. A reprieve, but still nowhere on the one in relation to the three, which is next. Obviously under understood and taken for granted at this game that there is a huge element, element of luck. But look, he's miles out with that one. Head came straight up in the air. He was very, very, very nervous on that shot. He's still jittery. But a smile from Efren. <laughs> he can get himself out of trouble. He had two swings at the one ball. And he hasn't really left it ideally situated for Bustamante. Just draw over to the side cushion if he can. Mind you, I wonder if he's looking at flicking the one in and looking at the nine <laughs> too, Steve. Well, it's risky if because if he does pot it and doesn't make the nine, he's nowhere on the three. But how can he get on that three? Is he going to try and play with left-hand English, hit the side cushion, the English side comes in before the nine and then over for the three? Possibly. Well, we had to ensure he missed the nine, and what a, for some of the lax positional shots that he's played, that was one of his better ones. His years of experience went into that shot. This always promised to be a photo finish and it certainly doesn't look like it's going to disappoint not every classic encounter between two players ends up as a classic but that doesn't really matter so much it's the build up the excitement of knowing two great forces coming together and what's going to happen in some ways it doesn't have to be a brilliant game every time it's just a Another chapter of a long-running story between the two greatest Filipino pool players probably there's ever been. I don't know the history of the Filipinos. Before Efren Reyes, was there another master of the game? Apologies to anybody in the Philippines. I'm sure Efren learned from somebody. I wonder who it was. Perhaps we can find out. Perhaps somebody can uh, email us. I think on, on www.worldpoolchampionship.com. Uh, That's the one. Hit that website and you can... Uh be interesting to know if anybody knows in the Philippines. If you are listening to us in uh, English, um, don't know what feed you're getting, but uh, yeah, who who did Efren learn from? There's a question. And this nine to once again split the opening racks. Six are in the box. Nothing between the two great Filipino stars. Bustamante and Reyes, three apiece in the race to 11. Whirlpool Championships. And look at the set. And now we talk about the break all the time. Compare the forms of these two players. A much younger Bustamante showing a lot more athleticism. Three, three. Yeah, yeah, Bustamante started his queuing uh, a lot before uh, uh, Ephraim Reyes. It's quite strange that. I just saw that just for a split second there. We might be able to say that again see that again at some stage Buster Menti started his pullback look at him queuing up on the left of the ball there but as it goes through the queue goes dead straight watch this don't copy this folks <laughs> yeah watch how um, how early compared to Efren Reyes he starts now he just starts now he hasn't even started there he goes but they hit roughly the same time a little quicker at the approach and certainly pulls that cue back a lot farther, right out of his bridge hand, in fact, yes. Steve. And also he has a slightly more delay at the back as well to just to get, set himself for the shot. So that's a bit better timing, and that's why Buster Mente can hit the ball harder. Has he got a path? Yes. These look quite nicely out in the open. He's had a few chances, has Francisco, to get his head in front in this match and as yet has not been able to well obviously the five to the six is a problem at club level um, amongst the uh, average players it shouldn't present a, a, a problem for Buster Mente. and I'm sure he'll be the player 
to tank the nine. As, as our friend in the Philippines said, a great line, tank the nine. You don't want to know what tanking the nine means in North America. Steady, Jim. That means missing the nine on purpose. A tank job. Ah. This a much better performance from Francisco, keeping that cue ball well under control. And race to 11 just gives the players a fraction more breathing space in which to, uh, to, to also have a little bit more of a storyline to the match. And um, well, we'd be nearly halfway f through the match uh, had it been a race to nine now. We just finished the first third. Down it goes. Francisco Bustamante enjoys his first lead of this match. 4-3 over the great Efren Reyes. You know, Steve, it's it's got to be so difficult to play a man that you know you've patterned your game after and you've idolized. To throw all that out the window and concentrate on the game can't be easy. All of a sudden, there's the different actions. Bustamante is already there. Wow! He was pulled back into position, Bustamante, before Reyes had even pulled the cue back. Apart from the fact that Reyes pulled it back online, and Bustamante was all over the place. But that hesitation at the back allowed Reyes to get back into it. There wasn't a lot between the times when they actually hit the cue balls. Francisco Bustamante. That hesitation, Steve, certainly uh, helps him align the cue for the final thrust. Well, the other thing it does is it separates the backward mo movement from the forward movement, and obviously you use different muscles to pull the cue back to the ones that go forward. So he does set himself well and time the ball so magnificently from the break. Got a great result there. And note where that cue ball is finished. With this much power and this much movement. I tell you, you should see him cooking breakfast. I mean, he's all over the kitchen. I'm not so sure. He probably lays that pan right on the burner with dead aim. Yeah, but he smashes the light bulb with his foot. Yeah, he's just flicked the three into the open. He's still on the two into the side pocket here and just draw into the top cushion as we look. But they're at his mercy. Everything in the open. Two rack advantage is nothing at nine ball pull. But you'd rather be 5 3 in front than 5 3 behind. Dare I say, Bustamante seems to have calmed down. He looks to be striking the ball with just that fraction more authority. He's got such a free movement with his action. We've seen already a few occasions of the cue power that he possesses, not just with the break off, but even when he has to move that cue ball around the table effortlessly. He doesn't choke the cue, doesn't grip it too hard. A little tip, a bit of advice, and why you shouldn't listen to anybody who says you must grip the cue firmly. The firmer you grip the cue, the more chance you're, the muscles in your arm are tense and you won't strike the ball as sweetly as this man. Arguable whether you can hold the cue that, that soft uh, and have that flowing a cue action for snooker, but certainly can for nine ball. 5-3. Francisco now in front of Efren. Remember, it's a race to 11. We're in the last 16. The business end of the most important event in the world. And the break-off certainly has come to the aid of Francisco Bustamante. Let's take a look upstairs on our mezzanine floor where the last 16 matches very closely fought out as well. Looks like Eminence 
pulling it back to 3-3. Three, three. Mick Rimlin, world champion here a couple of years back against one of the very hot favourites from Chinese Taipei, Ching Xiong Yang. And Mika very much in form. I believe he's spending a lot of time in the Philippines now, Steve. He's bought a bar there and just won a big tournament in the Philippines. Has he bought a dog? He'll have one soon. Back to the main focus of our attention here, Reyes and Bustamante, 5-3 Bustamante. Story of the match so far, Reyes has not been able to hold his break and capitalize. Bustamante, Bustamante possibly is getting the action off the break. Now we're gonna see a special shot. He's made the three ball. Wing ball, as it's called, going straight in the corner pocket. Lost control slightly of the cue ball. And just have a look where the blue two is in relation to the yellow. This is going to be a Bustamante special. Jacking up in the air. He'd like to be um, right over on the other side of the table, but I'm not sure that he can get over there. He's got to jack it up in the air, cue up in the air, put loads of backspin on with that sweet flowing cue action and draw the cue ball back all the way into this area where his hand is now. Oh, that is perfection. What a shot. And if ever a shot wins a match or deserves to win a match, well, that could be the one. Terrific cue power. Another look at it. Arguably one of only a handful of players that would be able to pull that shot off. Not just a screw back, a draw back. Um, not particularly hit that powerfully, but just controlled power. But there again, no guarantees, no certainties on a nine ball pool table. The pool table itself measures something like the inside area, I think something like nine feet by four and a half feet. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's roughly that. It's smaller than a snooker table, bigger than a, uh, a house pub pool table. Um, but the balls are bigger than the snooker balls that we play with. So effectively, the, the table can become quite crowded. And that shot was a, an example of a player couldn't get out of, out, out of the way of those two balls down there. Cut in the middle pocket. Ball shot. Ball in hand. Well, he must have touched the seven ball. And look at this, he made the nine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, if he doesn't touch the seven with his cue, or possibly the, the, the orange... Oh, well, well spotted. Well, that was superb from our referee. Yes, Nigel Reese, the eagle-eyed referee on the spot here, Steve. And what a spot that was. And I tell you that, also, there's no guarantees uh, that that Francisco would have felt that either. With his, they were, they, he could have played that and not felt touching that. It was that softer touch on the seven. What a big foul from six three in front. Now looking like five four. And can you imagine if Ni Nigel hadn't have seen that, with our the benefit of slow motion action replays, how uh, the referees are sometimes instrumental in making or breaking a game. No referee wants to be involved, but that was a great call. Didn't look like he had his eyes on it, did he? Looked like he was following the white, but he saw it. it was... He might even have heard it. What do you mean he's just got good ears? I think Nigel works at the RAF um, uh, day job. Um, not too sure he does, but if he's, if he's by those aeroplanes and those engines all the time, there's no way he's going to have good ears at all. Well, Reyes just about stopping that cue ball going in the pocket. 5 4, evenly poised. Join us. Table action en route to the quarterfinals. And Mika Imminen, 4 3 in front, eyeing up this three. And one of the rare misses that we've seen from Mika in this match. Well, he may not have done as much damage. But every time 
you sacrifice the position to your opponent you have to wait for him to make a mistake Reyes at the table can he now make a break run a rack and get control of this game we've seen him do it so many times before the year he was world champion his break off was superb he was employing the cut break then I seem to remember where you cut uh, the, the one ball and the, the cue ball goes to the side cushion instead of planting in the middle of the table no time taken here a straightforward bank just at the last minute that cue ball rolled turned left just to keep I don't know if we're going to see this just at the moment it's slowing down it just seemed to go there you go just went right as on our screen he would have had a, a nicer shot on the two that must have caught some dirt I don't think there's a slate uh, mark there there's three slates on a pool table that's not where the slate is that must have been some sort of chalk dust or something a bit of grit that's an excellent shot that is a very good shot Yes, yeah, so it was a good thing he didn't have to do anything with the cue ball there, Steve. Had he had to move the cue ball around, it would have been very unlucky. But as it is now, a long three to slide over for the pink four. Well, he was further away from the three than he would have wanted to have been after not being able to apply a backspin on the last shot. Just a little bit of a reach across the table there. Well, it looks for all the world like 5-5. Five, five. And I'm sure over in the Philippines, they can't split them. Nobody's going home. Draw this back for the eight. I wonder what the split is in that bar. I mean, how many people for <coughs> Efren? Obviously, you know, the great favourite. He's a, he's a great guy. But, of course, you know, there's, there's probably... If, oh, I would doubt that there's not a few quid on it. No, there's a few pounds and uh, shekels being put few, out. few drinks, anyway. But they said that the bulk of the people there were on Efren because he was a little older. Yeah, they're on him, but who are they betting? And there you go. <laughs> Ten now... In the books in Cardiff, 5-5. Five, five. That's an Efren fan. She's just happy to be here, being treated to some of the best pool that you're going to see anywhere. <laughs> Not many empty seats in the main arena. This battle of nine ball giants. Standing room only in the Philippines. And the only person without a drink is the dog. Everybody's forgot him. And a pretty good crowd watching Mika Imminen and Chin Chung Yang as well. And I can tell you that the score line there is now four apiece. So both matches serving up quite a treat for us here. That's a monster break. <laughs> no wonder they say he's possibly the best player, one of the best players in the, the whole of the Far East. You can't do better than plant the cue ball in the middle of the table. Let's see how Efren does. Nowhere near as much power as Yang. Just a fraction of movement, but that was a good break off. And all of a sudden, Reyes just starting to get a few rolls going his way. Yes, if Efren starts getting the measure of the break, he will take some beating. We've said it many times in commentary and in the past that if he does have a weakness, it comes in the form of the break. Been a while since we had a, a tactical exchange. Sometimes the racks that can turn a game. Balls have been in fairly open play ever since. Race to 11. Halfway there. 
effectively now it's a best of 11. Just try and hold the cue ball, Steve. Close to where it is now. Pinch the pocket slightly on the three and hold for the four to the same pocket. A bit of body movement there before he completed the shot, but never mind, it went in. He has the option, depending on where he lands on the five, of playing a 6-8 combination. Though if he can roll through here and play that six top right, That'll certainly be favorite. So unassuming is Reyes, man of little words, and as respected as anyone that's ever wielded a cue. He was given a lifeline in his previous match against Nick Vandenberg. Nick Vandenberg will have a few sleepless nights thinking about how he threw away that game. Efren was very quick in the post-match interview to say that he was lucky, but you know, he just strikes me like the sort of person, I think he's lucky all the time. No, it's amazing too, the more you practice, the luckier you get. Isn't that the great Gary Player line? The other thing about it is uh, if, you're try if you're a player trying to get the scalp of Reyes, it makes it a bit more difficult. Reyes goes into a 6-5 lead. <laughs> well, Francisco has just had to spend the last three racks in his chair. He's just seen a 5-3 lead evaporate. Once again, he's his break off. Bustamante pulls a cue back. He's in the back position. Off goes Reyes, and they both hit the ball at the same time. And you can see one of those cue balls jumping out of vision, and the other one in perfect control. That was Efren Reyes's cue ball. Watch it on the right. Watch that white jump. One of these players really plants that cue ball. Well, funnily enough, it's Reyes, uh, the ball's Black jumped 12, up in the air, even though he hasn't hit it so hard. And, of course, it depends on, as you, hit that, as you hit that ball, it's bouncing as it comes towards the pack. It's how you catch it. If you catch it as the ball's on the up, then it bounces up in the air. If you can catch it sort of as it's dipping down and whacking into it, you could probably get more transfer of speed as well. Oh, he's lost the white ball. Bad break off. Well, he did just about everything. Almost tried to kick that cue ball out of the side pocket there. This is about as much body English as you're going to see from Re Efren Reyes. So often happens if you don't contact that one ball centrally and the cue ball starts to veer off to one side or the other. And there's the reaction of Efren once he knew it was near the pocket. Ooh. 50 years of age. Just recently inducted into the Billiards Hall of Fame. And I'm quite sure that this man will be joining him at some time in his illustrious career. Just recently. I assume that for, at one stage it was just for American players then. I don't know the, the whole situation. Oh, great shot there. Now, look at the clever shot he's played there. Not just making the ball, he split the seven and eight apart. What a clever shot. A little unlucky to have left himself hampered. Doesn't have a lot of angle on this one with which to work, but the two, fortunately for Bustamante, is in the same half of the table. So just work the cue ball off those cushions. Steve, the way this match is going, where it just doesn't seem like either one is running away and hiding, are we looking at a possible one rack to decide who goes through to the quarterfinals? Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? It looks like you've got two marathon runners on a piece of elastic. Neither one can get away from the other, <laughs> pulling each other back. You'd expect it to happen for some reason as well. 
as if they're both waiting for that to happen as well, as if they both already prepared themselves for a final frame shootout, final rack shootout. A little straighter on this five. He just has to make sure to leave himself below the six for the natural angle to run up for the seven. Now we see the benefit of shifting that seven and eight apart so early in the, the run. I wonder if we'd asked both Reyes and Bustamante if, listen, if it came down to it and finished 10-10, how do you feel about playing one rack? for a place in the quarterfinals of the World Championships. I wonder what their answer would have been. Perfect angle to bring the cue ball down for the nine to his choice of corners. From Reyes, the first winner of this world championship here in its first year in Cardiff. Bustamante has come so close to winning last year. Is Bustamante going to win this year? Who knows? One thing's for sure, whoever wins is going to beat some great players. Railing Francisco Bustamante, 8-7 at the moment. We can uh, find out how it's going down in Manila right now to a sports bar. We spoke to them a little bit earlier on, but uh, Peter Santos, who's a, a regular there at the uh, the National Sports Grill, is on the line. Is everybody very nervous there at the moment, Peter? They're, they're all quiet, they're all quiet. And now Bustamante is about to break and, oh, they, they just uh, hope it will be a draw and both of them will enter the, the other face. <laughs> uh. I can tell you the rules of the competition don't allow that, Peter. Yeah, yeah, I know that, and it's so bad. One of them has to go. One of them has to go. I know, I know you're interested because a lot of Mika Eminem fans. In, yes, uh, down here, Mika is very popular here. Okay. He owns a bar right here. He owns a bar there, does he, as well? well he this owns is, a bar. This is what's happening right now. Um, on the top table, we can show you. Yang looks like he's, he's heading for victory against Mika Imminent. So Imminent looks like he's heading out at the moment, Peter. So, well, anyway, that's, uh, Mika is like an adopted son here of Manila. As you know, we, we, we had him here for, for four straight tournaments already, and he won two of them. He just won the last one, last July 6th. What's his bar like in Manila? Uh, Mika? Yeah, what's his bar like? Is it a good bar? It's a good bar, high class, high end, <laughs> and plenty of most mostly diplomatic people going there. Wow, sounds interesting. And uh, you, you say there are about what three, more than three hundred people watching on the big screen right now in, in, in the yes, bar yes, you're in. Yes, they're all around. There, are, there no, there are about there are about uh, ten monitors in this bar, and they were all scattered all around. There are about eight billiard tables here, but everybody's focused on this match. And uh, as far as Francisco goes, do you, do you think he's going to win it now? I think so. He has the break and uh, he's pocketing it very well. Now, if one of your players from the Philippines wins the World Championship, what would that be like in Manila? Oh, my God. First of all, there will be, you know, celebration to, when the night he wins it and there will be a ticker tape, uh, a motorcade, and for sure, the winner will go straight to the office of the president to receive her own congratulations. That sounds amazing. Tell me, I, I mean, I've never been to the Philippines, not this time of year, not any time of year. What's the weather like right there in the Philippines right now? It, it, it's the monsoon season now, plenty of rain. But it doesn't rain all the time, still fine. You can ask Mika and Ralph, they love it here. <laughs> we'll have to come over and visit you all. Thank you for joining us, and it looks like uh, Francisco's going to take this rack. Maybe, maybe. Okay, Peter. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the night. Okay. Bye. Okay, back to uh, commentary. Steve and Jim. Well, certainly, we knew Mika had a bar in the Philippines. Steve and I were just talking off air there, and uh, an adopted son. You know, that that's got to be a terrific feeling. You know, they're they're watching a few of their champions play, and here back to the imminent and Yang match, so it's not looking real good for the adopted son of the Philippines right now. No, is this 8-4 uh, to go 9-4, or is this... Yes, to go 9-4. Oh, it's well, 
I mean, everybody in the Philippines knows, obviously, that Mika Imlan is a great player, but they also know how good a player Yang is. Some very strong Chinese Taipei players over great Filipinos here. And also the Koreans have a couple of players in the tournament. The Koreans making a good effort this year as well. So very strong Asian representatives in, in the, the last 16 of this tournament. A couple of Americans. One, are we down to one American now? I don't know. And you're playing them. I've got him. Two snooker players. And two Canucks. Don't forget the Canucks. The Canucks, the Canadians. A couple of Canadians. Watch this break off. Oh. Bustamante and Yang. Are there any oh. left? Oh, my Five goodness. Five balls off the break. <laughs> Just a devastating break from Chin Chung Yang there. I wonder if Mika oh. Eminen has been forced to have to sit and watch that. I wonder if I go and offer him some mother w money whether I can buy that break off him. No, I don't think that one's for sale. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that, does it? Did the white go in then? Do you know, I thought oh. Eminem's are back up the table there. Anyway, well, something must have happened. That, that might have been the one ball that was still on the table then. He definitely did because Eminem is at the table. Let's watch this break off again and watch the cue ball. Well, oh. something must have happened, Steve, because that cue ball is definitely on the table. He must have. Well, Mika's, we can see from out, Mika's up at the table at the top there, and he must have missed the two. He did miss the two. Either that or it's all over and Mika's just practicing. Well, it went wrong. Well, back to the main table. We can confirm it has gone 9-5 upstairs. And to all our friends in the Philippines now, Peter Santos and everyone, we'll keep them right on top of that. You're going to see a little jump shot here from Bustamante. Yes, one of the few Filipinos using the jump cue, although we saw Lee Van Corteza last night using it. Efren Reyes still refuses to get a jump cue. As does Earl Strickland. Do you think it's to do with the cost of them? <laughs> I shouldn't think so. Well, I don't think Francisco has got away with this miss. Reyes was patiently awaiting the opportunity, and finally it comes. Not before time for Reyes. There is a bit of daylight between them. 9-7, race to 11. But to run four racks of nine ball is certainly within this man's capability. He wouldn't want to be 7-10 behind. 7-9 a little bit more breathing space, although obviously if he were to lose the rack to go for Bustamante to go 10, Bustamante would then have the break, which is obviously massive. This is a must clearance for Reyes. He may have left himself a little bit straighter on this five than he would have liked. The best he may now be able to do is to leave the cue ball roughly where the five is which means just a little bit harder a six ball than he could have hoped we oh, in trying to get back out into the table a bit more to get closer to that six ball he's missed the pot but he's been very fortunate I think he snookered he snookered Bustamante well massive stroke of luck there I'm sure Bustamante would have been pleased to have seen the five ball miss. He'd have rather have taken this situation than Reyes running the rack. Now, is that nine ball in the way, or can he come round the back? I wonder if he might be able to play this with a bit of bottom, Steve, and bend it slightly. Yes, if he puts backspin on the cue ball, even though the natural angle isn't there to bounce off, the backspin will start to curve the, the cue ball round the back of the nine and straighten out the line of the re reflection, so to speak, if it was a mirror. He may just be able to catch... Oh, he hit it a bit too soft. 
bit harder, it would have straightened up a fraction more. So, a let off for Reyes. Yes, the predominant feeling as far as Reyes is concerned is one of relief. After that missed five to get back to the table with ball in hand. You really can't see him failing at this attempt to secure the rack. He's a little bit under pressure. It's a situation he's known many times before. You just shake of the wrist just to sort of shake out the tension of the shot. He's not happy. Why? Well, he's left himself too much angle this time. The first signs of tension are shown in lack of positional play rather than missing the pot. And in that incident with the five ball, it was the effort of trying to play position that meant he missed the pot. He's now got to play a more deft stroke on the cue ball than he would have liked. Softer or with more spin. And has left himself more angle. But this isn't a problem. Across the table for the nine. And with the break off, he's only one rack behind. To the wire, as expected. As hoped for, 9-8, Francisco Bustamante in front of Efren Reyes. And it looks like those are a couple Reyes fans and all the actions we said. Let's pop back upstairs and see how Mika Imminent is faring. And that is not Mika Imminent at the table. Yang's got a powerful stroke. Slightly more difficult on the upstairs table to get the cue ball to work. And he struck that so well. Steve. He beat me last year. Yes. Oh, yes, he beat me last year. He's a good player, he is. Yeah, Steve, you and I actually talked about this young man last year, and we knew he was the real deal. Potential winner of this world championship. Took out a, another former world champion in the preceding round, Ralph Suke, 9-3. And he's looking at another convincing scoreline in his favor as Chin Chung Yang. Now on the hill upstairs. To nine. Settle down, please. Even though his fellow compatriot Fong Pang Chao has won the World Championship twice, I think, in the 90s. Um, I would imagine Yang is rated above him at the moment. Reyes knocks a couple of balls down, but he's not ideally placed on the two. But I think it's a shot he should, he will go for it. Cut it in, round the back of the nine. Perhaps just across the face of the three. And then to pot the three into the corner pocket. So two cushions. Unless this three goes in the middle and he can hold it. Two cushions across the face. Didn't mean to clip it and now that's gone safe. A mistake. Didn't mean to touch that three ball. That was a bit of bad luck there, Steve. I mean, if he goes by the three, he's perfect with the cue ball. And just flicking that three has taken him out of position. Now, I don't think this banks. I don't think so either. It's, it's hard to tell. If he puts right hand spin on, he may be able to cut across the three ball. And then the spin digs the three ball into the cushion and, and somehow manufactures an angle. I think he's playing safe behind the nine. Well, does Mika Imminent have a lifeline upstairs? Let's go back up and see Yang breaking off in rack 16. Oh, gone enough. No. Well, it's gone safe anyway. Possibility for Imminent. A long ways back, though. He's got to win all remaining six racks. It's been done before but you'd rather be closer to your opponent when he's on the hill. Well, that's what's presented to Bustamenti. A safety shot from Reyes after losing position. A frustration for him, but he's retained the advantage tactically. Will he still retain the advantage after the outcome of this shot? Only in as much as it's him at the table. Buster Menti will be delighted with the outcome of that. 
Uh, normally you don't see Efren Reyes take too many chances and this to me appears to be a very low percentage bank shot but the four is right there. <clears throat> if he can hit uh, inside the six ball send the, the the three behind the nine possibly oh I don't know what he's playing I'm not too sure perhaps the one the, the cue ball behind the four and he played the bank shot with with an element of safety should he miss it and he's got that yeah the two in one shot the only way that could have gone wrong if it have hit the right hand point of the middle pocket and come back down the table so clever thinking from Reyes shot to nothing equivalent on the snooker table and there's the situation you can see very clearly that welcomes Bustamante back to the table and yet another kick shot oh well <laughs> do you know <laughs> I've got a I, I, he played that he's kicked it out and he knew he was kicking towards the, the 9 and 8. There's no way he wants to collide with those two balls. He must have been trying to kick through the gap. What a great shot that was. That wasn't trusting to luck. He played it, guaranteed. Once again, a controlled kick out from Reyes. Oh, so clever, so clever. <laughs> controlled kick out, not trusting to luck. If you can work out to these to this level that these players work out the exact line you're going to hit the ball at you can play safe from a snooker expect a snooker back and you this one's I was going to say Steve what you're seeing right now years of experience is tactical play of a standard the like of which we have rarely seen here in Cardiff well Reyes will be trying to pot this three two cushion escape just hitting the top rail before the three and trying to pot it he's going to collide into the nine as well has he got away with it no finally Bustamante I mean, you can't call that a mistake because he's kicking at it, but all the terrific safety efforts from Francisco finally opens the door with a chance. Had that three ball been off the, off the rail enough, he could have kicked perhaps to safety like Bustamante did, but Bustamante got that three ball tight on the rail. Ooh, just going past the seven, okay. No problems here for Bustamante. He may well be turning up at the table for his break-off with a two-rack advantage with three to play. He looks like getting to the hill first, Steve. And breaking at 10-8, you've really got a fancy his position. You can't guarantee winning 10-8 in front, but at least you've given yourself every chance. He's a bit closer to the seven than he wanted could have gone astray just got a nip with backspin this shot not follow the q-tip through too far get the q-tip out of the way are we seeing the passing of the torch much younger Francisco Bustamante and so many great players coming out of the Philippines as Father Time caught up to the great one. He's not out yet. The nine down, and there's a nine upstairs. We're gonna pop upstairs very quickly. Yang at the table. And he has taken out Mika Eminen, 11-5, Chin Sheng Yang through to the quarterfinals where he will meet either Steve Davis or Earl Strickland. And we'll be back with more action following a short break. Stay with us.
10 8. And everyone on the edge of their seats here in Cardiff. He's breaking for the match. Settle down then, please, now. And everyone glued in on this break. Lost the cue ball somewhat. And it looks to have gone safe. And perhaps Reyes will get a chance. Look at that. Three, two, and nine. Another look at the break off, Steve. He's rarely not seen a ball go in off the break. And one wonders if fate may not playing a card here. I wonder if he was just a bit tighter on that break off than he had been on other breaks. He just killed the cue ball a bit. And uh, has he played a... Oh, he's not made a ball, so it's raised at the table. I've got 20 emails have been sent in, apparently, all the same, uh, saying that the man who... Who Efren Reyes learned from or was taught him, I'm not too sure, is a guy called Jose Amang Parica. You... Yes, another great Filipino player who spends a lot of time in America does Parica. I actually played Parica in Florida about 15 years ago. Is, is he, how old is he? He'd be a, a, a few years older than, than Reyes, but not many. You so, know, maybe somewhere between 50, 55, I'd say. But so Parika has been a great player from the Philippines for so a long not, time. We're not talking about a master grasshopper situation here. We're not talking about his, his mentor rather than perhaps a practice partner. I think a bit of both, Steve. I guarantee you they will have played together a lot. But Parika just won a seniors event in America within the last month. Jose, oh, look, look at this he's kick shot. He's got the nine. Perfect. He's won it. Oh, he's made the nine. Unbelievable! He kicked the one, made the nine in the side pocket. What an end to an unbelievable match. And look at Bustamante. 11-8, and he is through to the quarterfinals. Steve, what a match we have been treated to here. Well, a man who suffered so much heartache last year when he Lost out to Earl Strickland. He clipped the one. It was a great clip on the one. The eight, onto the three, onto the nine. Heartache for Reyes. Joy for Bustamente. Look at the reaction of Bustamente. He saw the clip. He saw the eight. He saw the three and nine. And he knew he won it. Apologizing to the referees for a split second there, Jim. The delighted Francisco Bustamante beats his idol 11-8. Wow, what a way to end. Well, and this crowd stunned at the end of that match. Reyes out without a shout just at the end. Watch it one more time. This, I'm sure, will be repeated in the Philippines for the rest of the year. A great escape. It looked like he made the one. Did the one go in as well? The no. shot of the tournament so far, and it proves to be a winner. Well, could that be... The sign that this is Francisco Bustamante's year. He's got all of the talent to play this game. He came so close losing out just to Earl Strickland last year. But you need a bit of luck. You need the skill. He's a great kicker of a ball. But that's a great way to win a match. A sad way for Reyes. Well, the table being prepared for our next match, which will be uh, Alex Lely of the Netherlands against Sing Jung Park of Korea. But that caught us all by surprise. What a way to finish the match. What a way to book your place in the quarterfinal. And, uh, well, how do you feel after well, that? <laughs> well, uh, Dave, you know, in the beginning, uh, I was play playing with uh, my compadre, you know. And uh, I don't feel like concentration, but... Uh, he gave me a lot of shot, you know. That's why uh, I try to to uh, play concentration, you know, because it's very tough to play against your countrymen, especially you know this tournament. And uh, I feel I <laughs> I don't know how I feel, you know, and uh, it's terrible. Like uh, when uh, I beat him, I make the last shot, the one and nine, you know. Uh, well, let's amazing. show you that shot because uh, it was a very very special way to, to end the match. 
How are you feeling at that time? Yes. <laughs> You even slapped the referee there. I know, I was so happy, you know, I just want to uh, take the hand and I say, I push him, you know, I say, this is a lucky shot and uh, <laughs> it's amazing, you know. Was it luck or you, you must have... No, I, I, it was lucky shot, I just tried to hit the one ball, uh, bring the cue ball all the way back, you know, and uh, I hit thin. Wow. And uh, it's amazing, you know, and uh, I was so nervous until now I, I win, but I'm still so nervous because it's, this is the, sometimes uh, I win with Reyes and a lot of times he beat me, you know, and uh, he play, he don't, he don't uh, play well, uh, the event, you know, that's why he gave me a lot of shot, you know, a lot of chance. How difficult is it to play a friend? Well, it's, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, they especially me and Efren is like uh, it's like brother, you know. And uh, we don't like to play each other. We like to play with the uh, against uh, with everybody, you know. And uh, what you gonna do? Uh, this is the draw, so you can do nothing. We just uh, follow the draw, and uh, it's very tough. But uh, you know, it's no chance you can uh, say no. Just play. <laughs> we were uh, when when the match was on. We, we made a phone call to a sports bar in Manila. I was expecting lots of noise in the bar, but no. Quiet, three or four hundred people watching, feeling nervous. And they didn't know who they wanted to win. They wanted both of you to win. Yes, and, uh, you know, they don't care who gonna win, but uh, they don't like to see uh, Epren and me in the table. And uh, so the, the people, they don't know what to do, you know. Just, they just uh, watch the game and uh, who's playing better gonna win the, the match. That's why the people, they don't know, you know. They just uh, watching and then they don't know. Maybe some, uh, some people, you know, they like Epren, some people, they like me. But uh, this is the game. You can do nothing. How proud would it make you to, to win this tournament for, for you and for your country? Well, you know, if, if I win this tournament, this is a big honor to me, especially in uh, my country. You know, if I win this, uh, this event, I like to dedicate to my country, especially, you know, last year I got a chance to have this uh, title, but uh, I got unlucky, you know, against Earl Strickland, he beat me. Uh, so bad, you know. But uh, what you gonna say? That's the the game, you know. You you gonna accept that? Hey, put it there. You've done really well so far. Congratulations. We'd thank like to see a lot more of you in this tournament. Okay, thank you, Dave. And I wanna say hello to the PBAM in Philippines and my compadre, especially um, our sponsor, uh, Puet Sport, is watching this event. And uh, Jose you, and, uh, you can Puch. say something quickly in your own language if you like. Okay, uh, ito, nakachamba. Kaya, boss, pasensya na, eh, wala, eh. Kaming dalawa ni bata yung nagkaharap. Hindi eh, namin gusto ito, pero wala akong magagawa. Ganun no talaga, pero pilitin ko na lang itong, ano, itong top 8, uh, sana tayo manalo. Kaya maraming po salamat sa mga tulong ninyo. At lalo na sa mga kababayan natin, maraming po salamat. And what was, what was that in English, briefly? No, I say uh, thanks for the uh, my sponsor, and then the people. I say hi, you know, and uh, I hope you know you can do nothing because me and Ephraim play each other, you know. But uh, I try to all my best to win this tournament. Hey, you you through? Yeah. Through to the quarterfinals. It must be a great feeling. Congratulations. We've enjoyed watching you.